My food's back. Okay, this is not going to be the most exciting video ever, but I figure you guys are already part of the journey of this machine, so I should milk it for one more round. You see, the motor that's on this machine is not the smoothest thing in the world, so we're going to swap it out. Hopefully you can pick up that rhythmic drone that's mostly coming from the motor. And if I pull my little rubber bung out, you can really hear things start to rattle. The motor that's on the lathe now is just whatever cheap motor was on it when I got it. The only thing I did to this motor when I rebuilt the lathe was spray black paint over the outside of everything. Fundamentally, it spins around, which is what a lathe needs, so I haven't really worried about it before. To spare you guys from some of that droning while you're watching my videos, I do normally operate a bungee cord tensioning system. Which helps a little. But I reckon it's high time for a more permanent upgrade. This is a pantograph engraving machine. Sort of. And here are two pantograph engraving machine motors. This is a three-phase motor that would have originally been fitted to the pantograph. This is a virtually brand new single phase motor that the previous pantograph owner fitted so he could run it at home. And I'm leaning towards putting this guy back onto the pantograph, which means this guy is a spare motor. Ah? Uh? Ah? Uh? At this point, I haven't even checked to make sure that the motor will physically bolt on to the MyFids mounting plate. I thought it would be more fun if we found out together. Ah, that's annoying. I can't even push it back far enough to get to the mounting holes. Hang on a second, I'm an idiot. I can adjust this little swing arm thingy. All right, I think it's going to work. Before I bolt the new motor in place, let's see how bad this garbage really is. While it's still hooked up, I'll run it on the bench. Yep. It sounds pretty nasty. It's not shaking too much though. But it sounds rough as guts. So I think I'll put this one on Trade Me. I'll take a photo of it with a one megapixel camera and list it as good condition, see photos. Not everything is perfect in the garden of lathe happiness. I'm going to have to make a bushing to sit inside this pulley. Well, that went pretty well. Okay, okay. No, I didn't make this the wrong size. 
I drilled all the holes in this last night, and then when I came down tonight, I couldn't for the life of me find it. Of course, it was sitting right next to the lathe. Anyway, now I have a spare hole. Let's see if this fits. Not bad. A little tight, maybe. Actually, no, that's pretty good. Now I have a decision to make. You see, the motor shaft has a keyway. The pulley has a keyway. The bushing has nothing yet. And you may notice also that the keyways are not the same size. So the question is, do I make one key that goes from the pulley through the bushing into the motor shaft, or alternatively, I could put one keyway into the bushing on this side for the motor shaft, and one keyway on this side for the pulley. This option involves cutting two holes in the bushing, but it means I can use the existing keys. This option means cutting one hole in the bushing, but I would have to make some kind of T-shaped key. I'm going for option number two. So I need to mill two slots into the bushing. And I don't have a milling machine. I have a pantograph, sort of, but using this machine would involve quite a bit of setup. So instead I will be using the Myford's vertical milling attachment. A lathe is never a good option for a milling machine. These milling attachments can be a little wobbly, but it should do fine for this little job. And that's our simple little machining project complete. Now the next thing we need to do is make these keys fit the slots a little more nicely. These are the two keys that were on the existing motors. This one needs to be cut down, the other one needs to be cut down a little bit. Now the next thing we need to do is reduce the thickness of this key. Well both keys actually. While previously it was running in this key slot and the corresponding key slot on the motor, now it's only running in this keyway and the thickness of the bushing. So here's our bushing with the key installed. And you can see that key sits just below the surface of the bushing. So when we tighten the set screw down, that's going to push the key into the motor shaft. And that's effectively going to sandwich the motor shaft, the bushing, and the pulley together at this point, opposite the key. The issue we have to address is that this is the side that the smaller key will fit in. Now if you can imagine the pulley, the bushing, the motor shaft all sandwiched together, this key would just be bouncing around in its slot. There's no set screw on this side. Now I could put a set screw on this side, driving up into this key. But then we would effectively be cancelling out that sandwich action. And everybody likes sandwich. I'll finish welding this up with a little more heat over in the vise. That'll do. I know it's pretty ugly, 
but it's all going to be ground off anyway. I just need a tiny little bit to join the two pieces together. And here we are. That was a little bit more work than just ordering a new pulley, but it turned out pretty good. You can see the key welded on the inside there. The red marker pen is just because I wanted to check where it was rubbing. The tube did contract slightly with the welding, but it still fits on. So let's put this all together. And I've hit a bit of a roadblock. The problem is, I don't have enough travel to get the belt onto the motor. And of course right now we're in lockdown, which is why this is a bit of a hassle. I have plenty of travel left in the mechanism itself. You can see we're not even halfway up. But the problem is, as you can see, the motor is fouling the back of the lathe up here. Now I could fix this right now. You can see the mounting plate already has slots which would enable me to move the motor further away from the lathe and presumably be able to swing it further up. But the shaft doesn't stick out far enough to accommodate that. I could also drill new holes a little further back. But here's the thing. It's sitting in a pretty good spot right where it is. So I think I'm going to wait and order a new belt instead. Let's move on and get this thing wired up. Now at the moment everything is wired up through the workbench and I'm not going to repeat that just because I'm about to move the machine to a different bench. But at that point I will route all of the wiring through the bench and up underneath the motor. What? I don't have a diagram or anything for this switch, so I'm going to use my multimeter to figure out what's connected to what. Let's start with reverse and see how the contacts line up. Every time the multimeter beeps, it's telling me there's continuity between the two contacts. So when the switch is in reverse, it's just connecting between the three pairs, which is pretty straightforward. Well, pretty reverse. You know what I mean. Now let's see what's connected when we put it into forwards. So the bottom two contacts are connected, just like they were in reverse. But I'm getting nothing across the other two pairs. However, now the top two pairs Instead of connecting across the switch, the multimeter is telling me that they're connecting, I guess you would say vertically, up to the next contact. So that little test has told me everything I need to know to go away and hopefully figure out a way to wire up the motor. This is looking inside the top of the motor. We have our power coming in here on this blue wire and here on this brown wire. And the motor doesn't care which way round those two wires are. To make this motor spin backwards, we need to switch over the red wire and the black wire. I know that, because it tells me underneath the lid. But for now, let's ignore the complication of making the motor run backwards, and just wire the power cable into the switch. Before I get started, I'll just point out that, as I mentioned earlier, we're in lockdown right now. And these are all the terminals I have and supplies are kind of hard to get. So there may be some twisty wire action. 
The cable that's already hanging out of the motor of course uses the modern brown and blue standard wiring, whereas the cables that were on the lathe before, including the power cable running into the switch, were the old standard red and black. So this is a little less confusing. I'm going to cut up a newer extension lead so the colours match up. The red and black wires will actually come in handy later. So let's start with our power cable. This is coming directly from the wall outlet. And likewise, this is the cable coming from the motor. Okay, so what we've done here is connected up the power from both the power outlet and the power feeding the motor. Now you'll note that in the off position, our blue wires are connected and our switching is happening between the brown wires. If we put the motor into forwards, obviously our blue wires are still connected and now our brown wires are connected as well. And reverse is exactly the same. At the moment, you can see the red wire is connected to this terminal, which is also connected to the blue power wire and also a pink wire lower down. So these three wires are all connected together. Now if I pull this off, now say I connected this red wire to this blue wire down here, something like that. It's the same circuit. These three wires are still all connected together. The wires don't care if they're connected here or at the terminal. So what we're going to do, instead of connecting the red and the blue wire together here, we're going to extend this wire back to our switch and connect the red and the blue wire together inside the switch. And I'm using a piece of the old cable to do that. It's convenient, we have red and black wires so we may as well. and the other end of our red wire comes out here and we'll connect it to this terminal. So now, whenever we put the lathe into forwards, the blue power wire and the red wire that runs up into the windings of the motor are connected. All right, so now we need to deal with the black wire. And because you can't sneak anything past a YouTube audience, yes, the green wire has reappeared. I had in my mind that we were using the red and black wires, so I chopped the green wire off short. But of course we need two black wires, which we don't have. So anyway, I had to redo this because I'd cut the green wire off right at the base. You'll note that this terminal that the black wire is connected to doesn't have either of the power lines coming into it. We are going to pull this black line off and run it into our switch. But all we really need to do is create a loop that comes back. That's why we need two wires. One wire to extend this through to the switch and one wire to come back from the switch. So to start with, we're just going to join these two together. This is running to the switch, the same as we did for the red wire. Now, if we follow the black wire back down to the switch, here it is popping out here and we're going to connect it to this terminal. And yes, I'm sorry, I've run out of the nice ring terminals. So we're just going to do this instead. Okay, so now when I put the lathe into forwards, nothing happens as far as the black wire is concerned because it's connected to this terminal. Now remember, for forwards, all we're doing is extending the black wire, creating a loop. So we're going to take this wire and connect it here, which is joining these two together.
And now back up here, we're going to connect this wire to the terminal. The same terminal that the original black wire was connected to. Okay, so let's look at this. We know what happens when we go forwards. The red wire is connected to the blue wire, and the black wire is just looping through our switch. Now if we switch into reverse, of course the brown wires are connected. Here's our black wire, so now it's connected to our blue power supply. And likewise, here's our red wire running into the motor, and that's now looping back through here to the original black terminal. So in effect, we've just switched over the black and the red wire. Hopefully. Okay, let's do this. Plug. Check. Imminent death? Uh, seems okay. Okay, here we go. Contact. And it's running clockwise and forwards. That's good. Okay, this is where it explodes if I've got anything wrong. Reverse. Yep, it's running anti-clockwise. Perfect. Now I'll be waiting two or three days for the drive belt to show up. But you guys will see the end result in three, two, one. Mmm, smooth like butter. Well, butter with the crappy rubber belt flapping all over the place. You guys might not be able to tell on video, but this thing sounds so much smoother than it did before. I am still operating a rubber bung though. What were you expecting? Come on! Five thousandths of an inch depth of cut. Ten thou. Twenty thou. Forty thousandths depth of cut. Eighty thousandths depth of cut. Come on, little Myford. She's doing it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.